So if we run our scene now, our bullet here should go away straight away. If we press WASD, it should move. If we press right arrow, shoots. Left arrow, up arrow, down arrow. Perfect. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to be going through implementing shooting, like um, Binding of Isaac games. And yeah. So to start this, um, we firstly want to go to our build settings, okay? And we want to go to player settings. Now, in our input, we have our horizontal and our vertical axes, which if you remember from the other tutorial, um, we use these to actually get our left and right input. So what we're going to do is I am going to right click and duplicate array element. Okay. So we've got a copy of horizontal and I'm going to name this shoot horizontal. Okay. And instead of having the left and right arrow key, um, wait, no, actually we want to keep the left and right arrow key. Okay. So if we're shooting horizontally, we want to press the left arrow key and right arrow key but we do not want to press A and D, so we can get rid of the alternative buttons. Now, in our horizontal, we need to get rid of all of these, okay? And we need to replace the negative button with A, positive button with D, okay? Um, now, if we minimize that and we duplicate the vertical one now, so we can also change that to shoot vertical okay <clears throat> and now we want to keep the down and up but we do not want the s and uh, w okay and we can get rid of all of these like we did and put s and put w okay so now with our inputs changed we can now edit our code so if we go over to our player controller what we firstly want to do is we want to define a few new variables, okay? So, firstly, we're going to need a game object that acts as our bullet, okay? Or in Binding of Isaac, our tier. So, we can have a public game object, okay? I'm going to call that bullet prefab. And we also need a speed for the bullet. Um, we need to check when the time was for our last fire and we need a delay for each fire because we don't want them to just be able to shoot like uh, without any delay or well, that's doesn't really add any fun to the game so I'm gonna add a public float bullet speed okay whoops okay I'm gonna add a public uh, sorry I want this one to be a private float last fire because we don't actually want to access it or modify it and I want a public float fire delay. Okay. Now, if we go into our update, now before we update our velocity and our collected text, um, what I am going to do is I'm going to define my shoot horizontal and shoot vertical. Um, axes okay so similarly to what we did with the horizontal and vertical I'm just gonna go float shoot horizontal okay I'm gonna make that equal to input dot get axis and this is gonna be shoot horizontal which we have just named inside of our player settings okay and float shoot vert okay input dot uh, get axis shoot Oop. vertical awesome so now we need to create an if statement and we need to check whether we're getting either our horizontal or our vertical input and we need to check um, if this is um, greater than our last 
fire delay plus the time from our last fire, okay? And to do that, I'm gonna type if, and I'm gonna type shoot horizontal does not equal zero. So if we're getting a negative or positive input, um, or we're getting a negative and positive or positive input from our vertical, so our up and down keys, okay? Then we wanna do an and, and we wanna check whether the time dot time is greater, whoop, is greater than our last fire variable, okay? Plus our fire delay. And if it is, then we want to shoot, okay? And whoop, we don't actually have a shoot method. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that now. So just outside of our update void, I'm gonna create a new void, okay? And I'm gonna call it shoot. And it's gonna take in a float of X and a float of Y because we want to be able to get in our horizontal and vertical axes inputs, okay? And we want to update our um, bullet based on that so it can go flying. So inside here, I'm going to create a game object and I'm gonna call it bullet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that equal to instantiate, okay? And we're gonna instantiate our bullet prefab at our transform.position, so at the player's position, at the transform.rotation, our player's rotation, okay? And we're gonna make sure it is a game object, okay? As game object, boom. I might just put this out a bit, okay? And now we want to um, add a component. We wanna add a rigid body to this bullet. So we wanna grab our bullet dot add component. And this is gonna be of type rigid body 2D, okay? And I'm going to get the gravity scale. If you remember from the previous tutorial, we set it to zero because we don't actually wanna make use of gravity in this game. Okay, so our gravity scale is gonna be zero for our bullet, but maybe if you wanted some power-ups or some effects that add gravity to your bullet, you're free to do so. But for now, I'm not going to. So now I'm gonna grab a bullet dot get component and we're gonna get the rigid body 2D, okay? And we're gonna get the velocity, and we're gonna set the velocity equal to a new vector three, okay? And inside here, I'm basically going to do what is called a ternary operator. So I'm going to check, it's basically like an if statement in one line. So I'm gonna check whether x is less than zero. Okay, so is x less than zero? If it is, then I'm going to do mathf.floor x because we want it to go down to negative one. Okay, um, this is so we can have a constant speed for our bullets. So we're going to floor x and we're going to multiply it by our bullet speed. Okay. Um, this is like else. If it's not, if it's greater than zero. Okay. Then we can do math f dot seal. So this will raise it up to an integer value. So if it's at 0 0.5, it's going to make sure it's always at one. Okay. I'm going to multiply that by bullet speed as well. And for the y, we're going to do the same thing. So y is less than zero. Okay. Whoop. Question mark. Math f dot floor y. Okay. Times by bullet speed. Okay. And if it's not, then math f dot seal y times by bullet speed. 
Cool. And finally, we just want to set the Z to zero because we don't actually want to use it. Now, we need to make sure we put a semicolon here and that should be pretty much it for our shoot method. Um, if we go back into here, we want to call the shoot method. So when we are able to fire, we want to shoot and we want to take in our shoot horizontal and our shoot vertical. Okay. And now we also want to change the last fire because otherwise it's just going to be like, oh, well, it's greater than the last fire. Sorry. Yeah. The time is greater than the last fire all the time. So if we don't update it, then we're not going to have a delay at all. So we're going to set it to time dot time. Sweet. Now, if we go back into our editor, we have a problem. We don't actually have a bullet at all. So I'm going to create an empty object. I'm going to reset its position. I'm going to call it bullet and I'm going to add a sprite renderer because we want to be able to see it. I'm going to drag my square in. Right now you can't really see it's behind the player. So if we drag it over here, cool. It's a little big though. So I'm going to change it. Okay. Can also change its color if you'd like. Put it to a nice dark gray. Okay. Now, our bullet is going to move, but our bullet is going to stay here forever. Okay. So we need to add a new script. So I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call this bullet controller. Okay. Now, if we open this up, boom, just in here, we are going to add a delay for our bullet controller. Okay. So after a delay, certain delayed time, we are going to destroy our bullet. So to do that, we are going to start a coroutine. Okay. And this one is cool. Going to be called, um, we'll just call it like death delay. Okay. Now a coroutine, if you're not sure what it is, we can just bring up the scripting API of unity. So if you Google coroutine unity, okay. Now should come up, just drag it up, Whoop. drag it over. We have a coroutine. Okay. So these are called by an IE numerator. Okay. And what we want to make use of is the yield return. Okay. So we want to use a yield return wait for seconds and we want to put in a float. So after a certain amount of time, we're going to wait for seconds and then we're going to destroy the object. Okay. So it doesn't understand what death delay is. So let's go ahead and create that. So I E numerator. Okay. Death delay. And Basically, we want to do a yield, return, new, wait for seconds. Okay. And I'm going to wait for, um, we'll just wait for our lifetime. Okay. And then after that, simply we will do destroy and then game object. Okay. Now we need to define lifetime. So I will do a public float and I will call it lifetime. Cool. So if we go back into here, we have our bullet. We're going to add our bullet controller in our lifetime. I'll set it to half a second. So 0.5 F. Okay. But we need to make this a prefab so we can create it multiple times because after this one destroys after half a second, we're not going to have access to it again. So the system isn't going to understand what to instantiate. So if we drag it into our assets, we have a bullet here. 
Perfect. So this acts as our parent for our um, prefab. So if we make a change, if we change the color, okay, put it to a lighter gray, it's gonna recognize that there's a change being made. So then we need to apply, okay? And now every single prefab is gonna be the same color. Cool. So the last thing we need to do is drag our bullet in, okay? And set up our speed. So we put it maybe 7.5 and the fire delay. Maybe we'll have half a second for that as well. Okay. So if we run our scene now, our bullet here should go away straight away. If we press WASD, should move. If we press right arrow, shoots. Left arrow, up arrow, down arrow. Perfect. Doesn't really go very far though. So we can just in here, we can change our fire delay. In fact, we can change our lifetime. Okay. Change that to like two. Okay. Goes for a lot longer. Perfect. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully this will um, inspire you to create a sort of Binding of Isaac like game. I think um, in future episodes we will go through and create some more um, Binding of Isaac related things like enemies. Maybe we could go through stuff like individual map creation. Okay, so like manually creating our level. Okay. Um, but yeah, for now, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I will see you later.